So what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be talking about Zalama and the Dragon Balls and the Namekians and the possible connection that all of those things have to Dragon Ball Daima. I said in my last video that I'm very skeptical to believe that this character here is Zalama and I'm going to explain my reasons why. Because if this character is evil, uh, to me that has implications. So Zalama is the creator of the Super Dragon Balls and we recently learned in the Dragon Ball Super era that the Namekians took shavings from the Super Dragon Balls to make their own. So what I am thinking here, and just bear with me, what I am thinking here is that this character may actually be the first Namekian who shaved shavings off the Super Dragon Balls to create his own. That's actually who I think this is. But let me explain why I think that, okay? Let's talk about what the Dragon Balls are and Akira Toriyama's inspiration for them. So in the trailer for Dragon Ball Daima, we see the sun and then we see a Dragon Ball. And that is because the Dragon Balls are based on what's known as the Dragon Jewels. And the Dragon Jewels are jewels that represent Buddhism in Eastern culture. And they are associated with the sun because the sun is associated with Buddhism as the bringer of light and life throughout the universe. So the Dragon Jewels, the things that Akira Toriyama took inspiration from, have major implications in terms of what the purpose of the Dragon Balls themselves actually are. And the purpose of the Dragon Balls, like the Dragon Jewels, is to accelerate the development of mankind. So, in actual Eastern lore, there were a group of religious and warrior monks who would travel from village to village and use these dragon jewels to purify the village, right? And the reason it was important that a Buddha used the dragon jewels is because selfless wishes ended up bettering society, right? It ended up having a uh, chain of reaction to where everyone around them ended up becoming better people because of the kindness that the monk who showed up to the village and purified the village showed by making a selfless wish to essentially help the entire village. So it has this effect where one selfless wish leads to a bunch of other selfless people who are more willing to do selfless things to help everyone around them. And that is the mythological inspiration for what the Dragon Balls are. Uh, the Dragon Balls are a replacement for the Buddha Sutras from Journey to the West uh, in the original Dragon Ball. And the purpose of the Buddha Sutras in Journey to the West was to bring enlightenment to the world. So you can see why Akira Toriyama switched the Buddha Sutras with the Dragon Jewels because they're very similar and they serve a very similar purpose and it's just a, a really cool switch up on Toriyama's part. Now, that goes both ways, okay? So this means that the Dragon Balls have a connection to mortal development, which is why I'm not skeptical to believe that the Namekians have some sort of role in Dragon Ball Daima because it, it would make perfect sense that they are as concerned with the Dragon Balls as Kai are or Goku or anyone else because on both sides, they're an accelerant. When somebody uses the Dragon Balls for selfish wishes, it has a effect on the entire universe. It has a chaotic and destructive effect on the entire universe. It literally changes the fabric of reality itself and everything bends to the will of the person who is using the Dragon Balls. Now, the same thing can be said about selfless wishes with the Dragon Balls. We've seen this countless times in the series. Every time Goku makes a, a selfless wish, everybody around him uh, grows. They become better people. We saw this even uh, when Seventeen made his wish in the Tournament of Power to restore all the universes, and Goku had his effect of breaking the egos of everybody in Tournament of Power, including Seventeen himself. That was like a metaphorical ego death that everybody in the Tournament of Power went through, and the Dragon Balls being used for a selfless purpose, which is what Zeno and the Grand Priest wanted from the Super Dragon Ball user, ended up creating this effect where everybody in the multiverse who participated in the Tournament of Power became better people and more dedicated to the ideas of martial arts. Sun Wukong was a spin on this concept. Trippy Taka would take him from village to village to village and he would eventually purify the village in his own unique way in comparison to the monks who used the Dragon Jewels. He would either kill a human who had became a demon and they would re reincarnate and become a better person or he would send a demon who fell from heaven back to heaven to report to Buddha and essentially you know change who they were so Toriyama is playing on the connection between the Dragon Jewels and Sun Wukong through Dragon Ball that's the entire point of the series so you can clearly see that the Dragon Balls themselves play a role in moral development and probably my favorite example is the Bardock wish because the Bardock wish being selfless led to Goku being developed into essentially the purest being in the entire universe. So that wish is the most important wish in the entire series because it led to Goku being the purest being in the universe who uses the Dragon Balls with pure intentions to essentially create this effect, this chain reaction, where Goku spreads his nature as an earthling, like his selfless nature throughout the multiverse. 
But it's important to remember that that's not all that's required of Dragon Ball users. Kami actually expands on this a little bit. It, the Dragon Balls are actually centered around the principles of martial arts more than they are really morality. They are centered around morality, but Kami also expects the users of the Dragon Balls to use their own power to solve their problems, to train as martial artists, to improve themselves, to have a, a sense of self-improvement in order for, you know, Goku or anyone else to be considered the ideal mortal. They have to have an attitude identical to what Goku has, according to Kami and Zeno and all the characters who have been related to the Super Dragon Balls in the past. So, I'm very skeptical to believe that that character is Zalama. It is possible. And if it is Zalama, let's just, let's just play with the idea that it's Zalama for a second. It would be ridiculously cool if Zalama was corrupted. Sort of like how Kami was like losing uh, his patience with the mortals of Earth because, you know, they, they kept making selfish wishes over and over and over and over again. So... That would be really cool, and it would, like, play into the title of Daima, like Dragon Ball Daima and, like, Piccolo Daima Al. I do think because this series centers around moral development and Dragon Ball is an accelerant of moral development, and it's also likely centered around the fact that Goku was purified by the Dragon Balls because we did see a little clip of Goku falling to Earth in the trailer. So I think all of that, that's the kind of stuff that Akira Toriyama is planning on expanding on in Dragon Ball Daima. He's essentially, it's the 40th anniversary of Dragon Ball. He wants to expand on all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I do think that the Namekians and the Dragon Balls do have a huge role in Dragon Ball Daima because, like I said, they are an accelerant of the idea of, like, moral development in both ways. We've seen this play out countless times. So the inspiration for the Dragon Balls plays a huge role in how they're actually implemented in Dragon Ball. A lot of people don't know what the inspiration for the Dragon Balls are, but once you know, like, everything sort of makes sense. The entire series makes much, much, much more sense when you understand where Akira Toriyama took inspiration for everything that he's implementing in the series because it's centered around Kung Fu. Kung Fu is something that only exists as a result of Buddhism and Taoism's effect on martial arts. And so Toriyama is playing on that by having Goku be a martial artist, a Buddhist martial artist. He doesn't even realize he's a Buddhist martial artist. That's the funny part. But he's playing on that by having Goku use the principles of martial arts as a stand-in for Buddhism because martial arts is its own thing. But Buddhism, you know, it had an effect on how people behave in martial arts. So Goku is essentially accidentally practicing the principles of Buddhism without even realizing it as a martial artist. And that's what's really funny is like, you know, the Dragon Balls are centered around a legendary item uh, that represents the journey towards enlightenment in Buddhism. And Goku is based on a character who was a demon, by the way. Dragon Ball Daima is clearly about demons. Goku was based on a demon who became a Buddha. Like, and Goku... So essentially, like, Dragon Ball is about a monkey demon who becomes a Buddha, and Goku is, like, a Buddha boy. So, like, he is, like, he's essentially a representation of, of a purified version of Sun Wukong, and that's the reason that the Dragon Ball is purifying Goku. Uh, and like I said, the symbolism behind the Dragon Ball is what they actually represent in Eastern mythology, and the effect that that had on Goku's character essentially purifying him. All of that stuff is very, very important within context, and it really paints a picture of what Toriyama is thinking and how he's implementing concepts in Journey to the West. Um, and it's really, it's super well done, and I expect that that is the kind of stuff that Akira Toriyama is going to heavily play on in Dragon Ball Daima, especially considering that demons and, like, pretty much everything that you're seeing play out in Dragon Ball Daima, the war between uh, gods developing mortals in one way and another. This is all stuff that plays out in Journey to the West, fighting demons and purifying them, not on purpose, but just by being such a ridiculously good martial artist that he breaks their ego, brings them to Buddha, and then they, you know, either... If they were a demon that fell from heaven, they returned to heaven. Most of the time, they're killed and then reincarnated, and then, you know, they become a, a better being later on. Like, so the stuff that you see play out with Goku in terms of, like, when he kills someone and when he spares people and all this stuff, like, all of these concepts and stuff, if you read Journey to the West, you'll understand that all of these concepts that Akira Toriyama plays on, he's taking everything and using it within the context of martial arts. Dragon Ball Daima is super, super heavily... Journey to the West theme. Now, the entire series, you know, as I've talked about countless times on my channel, it, the Journey to the West theme has never went away because Sun Wukong is a representation of the ego in martial arts. Like, the teachings that are taught in Journey to the West eventually translated and became a part of martial arts. Sun Wukong is a literal representation of the part of your mind, your ego, that you have to tame in order to be a proper martial artist. He's a little representation of the monkey mind, the thing that literally prevents Goku from being able to use Ultra Instinct correctly. So Akira Toriyama is still playing on these concepts. He's just applying it to martial arts and, you know, not being so blatant and preachy about the fact that he's using these themes and these concepts. So that's the reason that I'm, like, ridiculously super hyped for Dragon Ball Daima because I'm a, I'm a nerd when it comes to this stuff. I'm a geek when it comes to this kind of stuff. So seeing all of this stuff and being the type of, like, geek that I am when it comes to, like, Chinese lore and Journey to the West and stuff like that, like, Dragon Ball Daima has me super hyped. And I hope that my videos, you know, help you understand from a cultural perspective 
why Dragon Ball Daima is so hyped in Japan because from what I've heard it is ridiculously like people are ridiculously excited in comparison uh, to a lot of the Western fans and I, th that's why because a lot of this stuff is being done through a cultural lens that we just don't have access to because we weren't raised in that environment we you know we don't automatically we don't learn about a lot of this stuff you know in our education system this stuff isn't really common knowledge for us in the West so I hope that my videos can help you like appreciate the series a little bit more because I, there's a lot to appreciate here. Dragon Ball Daima has the potential to be a ridiculously amazing series and, and with the Namekians and the Dragon Balls and moral development and Goku being purified and all this stuff being the being what Dragon Ball Daima is likely centered around, I am ridiculously hyped for it and I hope you are too. Anyway, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.